That building was constructed in 1950. Um, pretty much steel I-beams, metal siding that covered a pool that was 40 foot by 20 foot. And it held 130,000 gallons of water. That water provided shielding for the reactors so that when, when they went critical that the radiation levels uh, remained low. Two reactors were, were put into uh, 3010 and they operated at one, uh, well the, the bulk shield reactor operated at one megawatt, the uh, pool criticality assembly reactor operated between one and ten megawatts. If you think about how long they operated, that's tons and tons of research that went into either training and how to manipulate cores, core design all this and all this that they, they took when they're constructing a bigger reactor, they applied that, what they'd learned and lessons learned to, to the design of uh, a larger reactor. I think about it a lot whenever we get a building and we knock it down. It's just not an old building. Uh, you know, back when they were operational, I always said, you know, wouldn't you like to be a fly on the wall and, and be in here when they were actually doing the work. I was there from around 1982 or three, and was there around 1987. I learned a lot and, and uh, had a lot of good times in there, you know, in terms of uh, the work that we did and the things that I learned, and it's things that I still use now. We actually shut the reactor down in about 1991. So it has been um, an opportunity for us to be able to do D&D, and we're very thankful for Office of Environmental Management uh, and our uh, local partners here in Laura's office to be able to put this on the priority list and be able to remove the facility. Initially, I was on the project back in 2015 uh, as a RAD supervisor when we started characterization on this facility. So being in it from that standpoint and following it all the way, uh, as far as the RAD manager initially on this facility, uh, all the characterization, all the reactor removal, uh, as far as routing, all the components pulling everything out of the pool, it's, uh, it's bittersweet, you know, to, to see it kind of go away in a sense, because I've been, I've been attached to it for, you know, quite some time. Started back in 2018, uh, started all the planning phase. And in 2019, we got through our cold and dark phase where we had to go in, take all the combustibles out, first thing. We had UTB come on site. They came over here and did all of our utility isolations, electrical and plumbing and uh, air, steam. Then we started into our deactivation phase, which was universal waste. And then universal waste was complete. We went into asbestos phase, got all of our asbestos done. And that completed our first phase of deactivation. As we, as we transition out here, one of the first things that we go through to get a building ready uh, to get to this stage is we have a process. We do a lot of uh, investigation for process knowledge, find historical documentation, what is left in the facility, what is the history of the facility, and then we go through the cold and dark stage. As you, as you get into these buildings, there's hazards in here that, that you discover. Conditions, and we call it change conditions, discovered conditions, and you deal with those things. And sometimes it does impact your schedule. But the bottom line is we have to get it done safely. Deactivation is about three to four times longer than demolition. And then that gets us here today, um, you know, to knock the building down. First of all, thank everyone uh, that has been involved in getting us to this point today. First, I uh, want to thank UCOR, the UCOR team, for the immense amount of planning, preparation, and the activation to make today possible. Uh, there's a lot of work that goes behind the scenes to get to where we are. You can see the big uh, yellow iron equipment, and that is just a very small portion, believe it or not, of what it takes to get a building like this demolished. It's really exciting because so many people have put in an inordinate amount of hard work. Um, what you see is a big piece of equipment just chomping away at the building. What you don't see is the hundreds of faces of people that you won't ever recognize 
um, that had integral part in getting to this point. Um, so it's a culmination of every type of discipline you can possibly imagine um, that got us to this point of demolition. So it's really exciting to be a part of that. It's exciting to see that they're continuing research in, in this area. I mean, Oak Ridge National Laboratory is a multi-discipline, multi-research facility. So it's good that they're repurposing the, the area and, and are able to do that. That's, that's exciting. It means a lot. It keeps us moving forward on our mission, which is to clean up this campus and, you know, moving forward with our commitment to the country that we're cleaning up our response, our environmental responsibilities. Been out in the Oak Ridge Reservation for, for many years now. Uh, worked uh, pre even prior to the u -Course first contract and I've seen the transformation that has happened at the East Tennessee Technology Park and how all those buildings came down and how we're in the final stages of remediation for some of the soil and now to transition over to two major government sites, one dealing with national security, one with a great science mission, and then help our country rid itself of these old facilities to make way so, so when gray beers like myself go away, young people like yourself can come in and take this mission to the next level for, uh, for, future, for future work.